Alrighty. So I'm I'm uber excited to see how well that worked out and just your feedback about that. Um, all right, now let's talk about kind of where here in week three, where we land in to week three. Some of the things I, a couple of things, I made a mistake in week two by having um, the items do the querying part two actually on Monday, on Tuesday night. It's normally Mon like all due dates going forward are Monday night and Thursday night, unless Monday is a holiday or Thursday, I guess Thanksgiving, yeah. So Thanksgiving would also affect us. So anytime there's a holiday, I always move whatever that item is because there's always two items per week due to the next day. Okay, so just know that. But I made a mistake, um, my bad, at the beginning of the semester. I just want to say that now so that you're not, you may have gotten like, wait a minute, so due dates are on Tuesday night. No, they're on Monday night. And why that's important is that, remember, I sent out an email last week about like understanding due dates and my grading process. So if you have any questions about that, please review that email. If you didn't get it, let me know. I'll resend it to you because it's an important part of understanding like my process because, you know, you're submitting work. I'm grading work. Um, submitting early really benefits because I can review it, you can change it. I grade every day, but I generally only grade once a day depending on my schedule, like today it's nuts, but I'm not complaining. So just getting used to that process, okay? So this week, um, in, a, in addition to, actually what we're gonna do, so let's just actually look at this week, right? So if I look at this week, so when you reply here, I'll come back and talk about that in a minute. So in this case, you're going to do this assignment. I've already gone over that, right? So the next thing you'll do is uh, you'll actually now do part four. So we're going to end doing the um, querying. So we're going to end our our venture, our broken parts of the querying lecture. And now we're on the third part. And I don't have a video for that. That's, that's part of this is we're basically doing, not basically, everything you learned or you started to learn. Some of you had some hiccups in the way that I wanted things. So I'm actually going to show you an example in a second of another student who submitted that. But in this case, you don't have a video for me, but I am posting some updated content I provided because some people got really thrown off by how to create um, their proof of work file uh, in this, in the querying for the part three. Uh, because it kept getting overwritten, so I provided this uh, content. So I've provided it again this week, but I've updated it for the references to uh, the work uh, file, like the part four SQL. So we're still using that querying uh, directory. Okay, uh, I provided that, and then here's the instruction. Right, so you can go through this again. Not that different, and in, in you're still doing the same process. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you actually <coughs> a student's output from, from the part three, just to give you what I'm looking for. So first, and I appreciate Oscar letting me use uh, his example. So uh, Oscar, and, and by the way, this is kind of the first thing, is when you submit this work, what you want to do is go into the querying, because by this time you will know I'll have new ones, and you'll go to history. And this will be the URL because what will happen, right, is that I, I, this is part of you doing the work and part of understanding how I require it. So what I do is I go through here and I start looking is did you have all the commits that were required, right? And then I start looking at those commits and I'm like, okay, good. So what I see is updates to the, because sometimes I have you take notes, right? And then always you're writing the SQL. And in this case, I'm also, every time you finish one of the queries, you comment it out, I'll show you in a minute. Well, first you create your proof of work and then you um, come back, comment out that first query and, and start on the next one. So oftentimes I'm asking you to write something, right? But I'm also looking at this SQL file uh, and I'll show you the actual file, but in this case I see, so when I look at it, and you can look at this too, is like here's the, here's the change, right? So we got rid of this one and then we added 
uh, right so we got rid of that one as well and then I look at okay here we go here's our proof of work now what happens is that proof of work and this is something I've just realized recently and you're doing it for each time you're writing a query along with Carter okay but what happens is I think it actually updates most of the file uh, here right but you you just want to do that every time you don't want to run it at the end okay so what will happen is that first my first pass through is I look sorry let's go back to commits right so I'm gonna look where all the commits there okay and then I look at those individual commits I look at the information that you're putting in here Oscar did a great job on this okay so once I finish that then I go back and I look at it here at the folder level and at the folder level I look at um, the readme file right so in this case here's the information really nice job good information what I was asking for that was from part one and actually he put what well, this was what I was saying and he put part three at the top that's wonderful okay so um, sorry go back here so I would look at that uh, uh, where am I at I got too many things open that's actually mine okay so now I look at that file right and then I look at this file because what I would expect to see here is every one of those queries right uh, and then you because you write the first query you right, you write it in the terminal and that's where I show having two terminals open and then when you have the query working you know it works great no issues right then uh, you go to your other terminal and you output your proof of work so at the end I should see all of that in that proof of work so I in addition to looking at all the commits I also look to see if all those uh, files are there okay so just know that just know that as we're coming into this and a couple of you have reached out for help that's great please come see me like I said we don't have a tutor for this class I did talk to Zach the tutor for my other classes and if you just need github help you can totally go see Zach um, so let me know maybe I'll post it out on discord which by the way I do post more regular on discord if you're not there you might consider that okay so here's what we're doing uh, and I have looked at some of some of the folks who have done the part one for the most part again now the difference in doing the problem sets is your readme file becomes your work uh, kind of your proof of work or what I call your well actually you still create a work so let me let me slow down and be clear about this you're still going to do the proof of work file but your readme file becomes your authentication your authentic your authentic learning and because in this case what I'm looking for is like I you know I attempted this query I got this error I made this change now the more detail you give me there the more authentic it is because the truth is most people don't write these queries the first time right they generally have to take a couple of stabs at it right and so the difference in the problem sets is you're still using one file for your queries you're commenting them out you're still creating a proof of work file but you now have an additional readme file that is your authentication file where your readme file on the uh, querying was really uh, for taking notes right so again the reason I'm not changing this uh, content I'm not adding anything new is that I want you to get used to this process because starting next week then we, instead of doing because we'll have finished the uh, querying part then we'll do two problem sets like so Monday will be a, a part of normal and second day will be the second part of normal and then we'll start in a new topic okay all right so again I hope that gives you a little more content or context for understanding that okay so now let's talk a minute just about the technical interview okay so I'm gonna scroll down here and actually I'm gonna go to the calendar in a minute but I'm gonna scroll down here after week eight okay so after you get all the way through week eight then the technical interview will be open and what happens is and let's just go look at the calendar where week eight is right so here we are in August I'm gonna scroll forward here we are week eight is in October 30th so once you finish this week it's not showing on the calendar because the actual technical interview is not due to the end of the semester but I that's its final time you can do it you really want to do this sooner as a matter of fact I hope to see many of you starting this week and what what we'll have is a process for signing up that's not as important as understanding what it will be well 
The reason I had to do the good practice is it's going to be somewhat like that, where I will have a sample data set. Maybe you've never seen it. Maybe you have. Well, who knows, right? Again, I will probably have this somewhat unique, and then I'll have you, hey, write queries to do this. And even if you don't have the exact querying, I will also give you some points for just understanding how would you approach it? What would you need to do here to answer this question? But of course, the better you can write the queries, and, and this will be, will be, now, how do you do this? You'll end up doing this either on Zoom or here in the office, but we'll use some, and, and again, I'm in BE Business Ed 113. We'll use uh, for those, and I see most of you remotely because you're online, right? That just works for you. Now, the timing of these things is where it gets a little tricky between your schedule and mine, because like I said, I'm an early morning, not late night gal. So of course, what will work best for me, and you'll see this when we get closer, is I'll, I'll have you sign up during office hours, but you won't be limited there. And uh, because you'll have flexibility, again, you'll have from this point, right, October here, all the way through to December. Now, here's your incentive for coming early. The earlier you come into the technical interview, we'll be covering, your technical interview could cover content up until that point. So the sooner you come in, the less content that may be in your technical interview, okay? Now, if everybody signs up right, right after this, uh, if you sign up and you get on the schedule here, then that would be when your, like the content would be from week eight, which is we're into designing here, right? And designing databases here, right? So if you sign up, there, then that would be it. So I'm really trying to encourage you to sign up because not only do I have all of you, which is wonderful, I have a lot of good students uh, in this class. I also have a programming class that I do a similar thing with. So my time starts to really crunch. So the sooner we can get you through this, it'll be done as 25% of your grade. Last thing I'll leave you with, and you can ask me any questions about this that you might have. And I have this question sometimes, so I'm just going to handle it here. Can I not do one? Sure, it's 25% of your grade, and you could, I can show you how to, cal you know, determine in Canvas, and Canvas has this what if thing, that once that item becomes available for you to see, you know, and you and I could talk about that. If, if it's 25% of your grade, you'd have, depending on what grade you'd want to end up with. I don't recommend not doing it, because just good experience because if you're in a technical field, which all of you in some way are, this is not the last time, trust me, you're going to have some kind of technical interview. And honestly, with the way the world is right now, it's the only way I really know how to authenticate how well students are translating these concepts. Give me feedback. What do you think? Again, in your post here, right? I'm going to scroll back up to week three, right? Um, you know, in your post, First, tell me about, right? So let me, let me actually sh model this to show you, right? So let's actually do a little formatting here, right? Good practice. So first write um, here, make this a heading, right? So let's make this like a he heading three. By the way, this is HTML underneath. So uh, write about your experience, right? Of using the ICA good practice and then you'll do uh, any uh, let's just say week three questions and or comments okay so then that would be a heading as well right so yeah will I grade on did you get these headings right sure right so so that's the way I'll I'll set the same heading heading three yeah they look different so in this case write about that Right? Uh, again, this is, uh, like I said before, this is uh, most of the points for this. You do get some points for this part. And I'm excited and nervous for what's about to happen because when you create software, so many different things go wrong. I hope they don't, but please uh, report them if they do. All right, have a great week and I'll talk to you later.